Hi, my name is Miles, and in this one, we're going to look at the three different ways that you can do a double exposure shot in Final Cut Pro. We're going to start off with this one, which is the type you've probably seen most often, where you've got a white background, and just your subject has that other image overlaid onto it. So for a white background with the subject replaced with other footage, this being my subject and this being the background that I'm going to fill in with the subject. This is really simple. You might want to shoot this in front of a window like I've done here, but if you're in a studio with a white background that you can light properly, then by all means go for that. And you want to make sure that the background is pretty much blown out, as in there's no detail there at all. It's just pure white. Now I was inside, so by the time I lift the exposure on the camera to expose me properly, because there was no lighting on me, that meant the outside was nicely blown out. Obviously I want to get rid of all the window frame and the rest of the house, so I'll just do a quick mask to do that so I'm going to tweak the colors though because I'm also really overexposed so I'm going to bring the mids down and just to make sure the highlights are gone I'm going to lift those a little bit more so I know that's pure white at this point to fill in the gaps around it I'm just going to add a generator a solid there we'll use the whites one and obviously that comes out at kind of a smoky so I want to change that to bright white then they'll two, the two will blend and I've got a pure white background. Then it's just a case of dropping the filling footage on top of the subject. And all I'm going to do is change that blending mode to screen. And that's pretty much it. Bob's your uncle. You can tweak it by looking at the colors, maybe on the bottom layer first. You can try and play with the shadows to make your image a bit darker and a bit more contrasty. You can see that before I did that, we were way above the zero level. So all the blacks have gone quite bright in this situation but you can play around with the exposure and saturation to your heart's content. I would maybe think about adding an adjustment layer with a vignette in this case. If you're really picky you might want to reframe and centralize the subject and also you'll notice at the end of the clip my arm crosses the window frame so it's cut off by my mask. You might have seen how I dealt with that and that was by adding another mask and trying to creatively make it look like I'd done that on purpose. So making a big slash cut right across my body and then feathering that off a little bit. It looks like then that it was an intentional cut, cut off there by a design choice and it's less noticeable or it would be if I moved the mask up that I actually cut off my arm in the process. So that's method one done. Now I was making a music video and I realized I wanted to use a double exposure kind of look to emphasize the fact that my subject in the video had some demons within him. But I didn't really want a white background because it was a, a dark industrial type track. So to do it with a black background, it's actually just as easy. Here are my two clips. So I shot this by lighting my subject and I actually had a black background that wasn't catching any of the light. And you can see on the scopes that it's pretty black down there. Then I've got another clip here, just a, just a guy with a sickle, totally normal. And again, I'm gonna put the filler footage on top of my subject and I'll change the blend mode. But this time the blend mode will just be multiply. Again, to get the look that you're after, changing the exposure on the clip underneath is going to be how you can achieve what you want. Just being careful not to lift the shadows above this zero point because then obviously you'll catch up all the footage above. So I like that in these images you get to see some of the detail in the faces and in the subject image. But what if you actually wanted to make a silhouette? That's where this third method comes in and this is a bit more involved. So in this scenario, it could technically work with any background, but you're going to want to be able to key it out. Now, if you've never used the keying tool, it relies on the color in the background being different to your subject. It's used in movies all the time when they film special effects. They have it against the green screen so that in post, they can delete the green out of the scene and then put whatever they want in the background instead. So ideally, you've got a solid color behind the subject that you want to work with. And in this case, this is the sky, which is not perfect because obviously there are white parts on my subject as well. But let's see how we can go about deleting that. So I'll add the key effect. And because it's expecting a green screen, it's actually trying to look for those kind of hues. Because I'm not working with a green screen, I'm going to turn the strength down to zero and then choose to sample my own colors. And this is where I'll drag squares over the sky to try and tell Final Cut that that's what I want to delete. That's already looking okay. If I try and sample 
bit closer to the coat. It does a decent job, but then if you see the helmet at the top left, it's starting to catch. So I'm going to leave that about there. And then it's just a case of playing around with my mat tools, try out, shrink and expand. And then to deal with the bits where it's caught into the middle of my subject, you can just fill holes and it will bring that back. I'll soften that a little bit and shrink a bit more. That looks like a decent key. So in this case, I'm going to have the bike as the footage that's going to display within this gentleman's face. So to do that, I'm going to put my subject on top of the bike itself. You can see how that's made the bike now the background. But what I actually want to do is make the bike fill my subject instead of appear outside. So if I change the blend mode now to stencil alpha, that tells Final Cut to delete any parts of the image which were keyed out in the top layer's key. And then it will just show me what's underneath it. Now, the only problem with this for me is you have no idea that this was a gentleman putting on his helmet and you've lost the connection to biking, etc. So what you can do is you can add a Luma key to the subject and then you can manipulate the Luma key to try and bring some of your subject back. And you can see here we've got an outline of the subject as well as all the bike overlaying him. Now to get the background back, I'm actually going to make a copy of this subject. So I'm going to command C and then I'm going to make these a compound by selecting both and hit new compound clip. I'm going to paste my subject back on top. And if I drop that guy underneath, but take out the keying and make that a normal blend mode, we get the sky back into the image as the background. If I wanted something else to be the background, Let's use the clip of the guy driving off instead of his original background. You can see the problem that we've got parts of this drone shot actually infiltrating the double exposure part of my image. There's a couple ways we can deal with that. If we actually take off the Luma key on the subject and we just have the silhouette, then that's allowed us to get the background on. But like I say, then you don't know this is a guy getting ready to ride. So what I would prefer to do is to actually add a black solid into this mix below all of the other clips. And I'm also going to make another copy of our subject layer. And on this one, this new top one, I'm going to take off the Luma key and then I'm going to compound clip the middle two. So there's our compound with our subject and the new foreground. There's the subject layer again, but on stencil alpha with the Luma key removed, and we've got a new black layer below the whole lot. And then if we go back out to the main sequence, we've got the background below that giant compound clip there. And this time the background doesn't infiltrate into the, the image itself. So that was a similar method that I used in the portrait of myself where I was filled with ink. I started with a white background and instead of using a Kia to delete that, I actually used a Luma Kia. This tool is used to tell Final Cut Pro to delete something from your scene based on how bright it is. So to delete all of the white, I need to bring the shadows down into play and then cut the top end down until it cuts into all the white and then maybe a little bit cut into myself still so that it gives me some definition around my cheeks and my face. And I'm going to try soften that. Then if I put that over the ink clip, you can see how I'm cut out onto the background until I change the blend mode again to stencil alpha. Now you can see the softening has actually exposed some of the edges. I'll crop in a little bit just to get rid of that. And it's as easy as that. Whatever clip you put underneath is just now going to fill my body. And the key has given my face a little bit of definition. And obviously you could use anything. You could use smoke, fire, thundery clouds, landscapes, anything like that. It's a really fun tool to play around with. Now, if you actually wanted to put something else in the background and replace that instead, let's say, for example, you wanted to put a sky time lapse back there and be really cheesy and hipster. All you need to do is make these two clips into a compound. So I'll right click, make them into a new compound. Then you can see the background and I've completely been cut out and replaced with that ink clip. Really cool. All right, that was my comprehensive overview of all the ways I know of to get a double exposure in Final Cut Pro. I hope you found that useful and I'd love it if you did, if you let me know, maybe think about subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.